Hey, what's going on? going on, everybody? Kyle Hoffman here from the University of West Florida. Defense today, we're going to talk a little bit of defensive line play and talk about our four eye techniques and uh, kind of get into our, you know, what we might, might call our 100 and 200 level um, basic four eye. Here's my information. Kyle Hoffman here from the University of West Florida. I'm um, the assistant defensive line coach here. Uh, my contact information is available on the screen. My email address is hoff15132 at gmail. And my Twitter handle's on here. It's at my name, Kyle underscore Hoffman underscore. There's one F and two N's in there. Um, I'll pull that back up at the very end for those of you that, um, you know, stay for the whole time and put it up here again. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, you know, I can always access more film, uh, pull up some more of our practice drills if you'd like to see. But again, we're going to kind of talk about our four I play today, um, how we do it out of our, our three, four defense and kind of talk about some 100 and 200 level technique stuff and then some of our practice drills and then some um, some practice film. A little bit about me. Um, I've been at the University of West Florida now for about 18 months. Um, I came on in January of 2018. It was basically a walk-on, uh, you know, I'm, as you might call it, a walk-on coach. Uh, before that, I was the defense coordinator, uh, special teams coordinator. I coached the defensive backs and also did the recruiting for us at Phoenix College. Uh, before that, I was a, a head high school uh, football coach out in uh, Napa, California, finished high school for about three and a half years there. And then before that, I coached about uh, 13 to 14 years of high school football back in Arizona and Peoria and Glendale over at Centennial High School and Mountain Ridge High School. Was blessed to be a, uh, around a lot of very good coaches um, growing up from about 19 to 30 years old over there, um, which prepared me for that position I got out in California and then led me back to Arizona at Phoenix College and then uh, over here at University of West Florida. So appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, kind of want to start with some of our foundations of our defense. Um, obviously, the stuff that we're going to talk about is important, um, but it does go beyond that. Um, kind of our, our three backbone characteristics we talk about is number one, our technique and scheme. We kind of talk uh, call that our arete of our defense. So that's our alignment, our stance, our technique, our keys and our responsibilities. So we're, we're gonna uh, spend a lot of time talking about these five things today when we talk about our four I play. Um, when we get into some of the, um, some of our team stuff and we look at the, you know, the, the alignment, stance, technique, keys and responsibilities of that four I, we'll also talk a little bit over here, which is our swarm and pursuit, which we talk about grit, effort, intensity, desire, enthusiasm and work ethic. And then um, other talks, we'll get more into our playmaking ability, which is tackling, sacks, interceptions, and forced fumbles. So um, again, those three things. Number one principle, and we're going to, like I said, get into a lot more depth on this today, is our arete. That's our technique and scheme. Um, arete is also our uh, program's theme at the University of West Florida. Uh, it's the Greek word for excellence and the fulfillment of one's fullest potential. So we talk about uh, excellence in our basic defense again, and that goes back to our basic alignment, our stance, our technique, our keys, and our responsibility. Again, we will get a, into a little bit of swarm when I talk about our four eyes and, and, and pursuing the ball and playing hard and uh, giving extra effort. Um, and then in other talks, I will get into our production and how we do stuff like that. So um, how we break down our arete is we, we feel like 60% of that is on us as the coaches. And that's our ability to convey the information and to be teachers. Coaching is obviously teaching. So we, we believe like 60% um, of this falls on us as coaches to be able to teach our players and find a way to teach them and find a way that they learn. And then we say that 40% of the responsibility of Arate, again, that's the excellence of our defense, comes on the players. And that is their willingness to learn um, and that is their ability and desire to execute. Now, uh, going into that willingness to learn, um, some of that obviously falls upon themselves in film study, in their note taking in meetings, um, in their questions they ask, and just in the, in the preparation they put in behind the scenes um, in our basic defense stuff. Um, we'll talk about swarm a little bit when we get to the, the team stuff. And again, that we, we feel like that primarily falls on the players and that then that's 80% of them being self-motivated, but then 20% of that falls on us as coaches to motivate them and also hold them accountable in practice. The production part of our defense, which we'll, we will not be talking about today, 
but we feel like that is 50 50 in us providing them the tools to be successful and putting them in place to be successful and then 50 percent of that falls on them possessing the ability and then having the desire to make those plays um just to, again a little bit more about our defense uh we, we go into each game with six goals uh number one is we want to have a swarm to eat at greater than 90 percent uh number two we want to win, a, win the turnover battle that means to have three takeaways or have one more than the offense gives up. So three's not enough if our offense gives up three. If the offense happened to, to give the ball away three times, then our expectation on defense is to have four. And then if the offense somehow gives it up four times, that means we need to take the ball away five times. We always want to win the turnover battle. Uh, limited explosive plays uh, is number three. Uh, number four is no cheap down, no cheap touchdowns, no gimmies. Number five, we talk about regulating the run game, which we'll see today when we talk about our four-eye play. And then number six is regulating the red zone, which uh, we will not get into today. But again, that, that's one of our six game goals. Um, and then our basic essentials for success, number one is swarm to eat. And we, we don't talk about running to the football. We say swarm to eat and pursue the ball. And when you get there, have some bad intentions. Number two is tackling. And then number three is ball disruptions. Um, I will do some separate talks on those at a later time, but those are our three essentials for success within our defense. Uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, our four eye play and our three, four defense. So our basic alignment, obviously being a four eye is being in the inside shape of the offensive tackle. Um, essentially we say that uh, our defensive lineman's outside eye is going to be on the inside eye of the offensive tackle. So just got a little four eye, uh, just logo here. And then, I mean, gosh, in my 20 years, um, we've numbered the, uh, defense, the defensive line alignments differently, uh, different places. This is actually not how we do it at the University of West Florida completely. But again, just looking at the four eye right here, it's gonna be on the inside shade of each tackle. All right, so that's what a four eye essentially is. Uh, we're gonna talk about our stance. And in our four eye play, it's essentially what we call that as our attack stance. So we talk about our feet being slightly wider than shoulder width. So we usually tell them to start with their feet underneath their armpits and then just slightly move their feet out a little wider. Um, obviously everyone is built a little bit differently. So some of these could uh, slightly deviate, but generally we tell our guys to have their feet just slightly uh, wider than shoulder width. Uh, we tell them to get up on their toes and screw their cleats in the grass. So we tell them to get up on their toes and we're gonna tell them to rock side to side a little bit and just kind of screw their cleats into the grass. Um, we go with a staggered stance. So uh, essentially it's a toe to instep relationship. Again, sometimes, uh, you know, everyone's got different length levers. Um, so some guys might be a little bit longer. Some guys might be a little bit shorter, but in general, we tell them to have a toe to instep relationship. And then with that, um, in that four eye play, our outside hand is going to go down and that outside foot is going to be the one that is back. Uh, so that outside toe is going to be on the inside foot's heel and that outside hand is down and that outside hand, which is down, we tell them to put up in front of their face mask. Okay. And then their other hand, their inside hand, uh, their off hand, which is hanging down, um, is going to be relaxed. We make sure that off hand is not tense or flexed because a tense and flexed muscle is actually a slow muscle. You think about it, if you go to fight someone and you're all tensed up, you're gonna have to unrelax before you can move. So we tell our guys to have that off hand nice and loose so that you can shoot it right away. You don't have to untense it before you can shoot it. So again, that off hand is gonna be down and it's gonna be relaxed. Uh, on our body weight distribution, generally we tell our guys to put 70% of their body weight on their front foot and their front hand, which is down. Um, they can basically be able to pick up their back foot and hold their body. They should be able to balance on their uh, front hand. Um, sorry, their, their, their front. Yes, their front foot and their front hand, sorry. Um, and then we tell them generally their butt is up, not too high, but butt up, flat back, neck bowed and eyes up. We wanna be able to get our eyes on our key, which we'll see what uh, talk about here in a minute. Uh, our technique essentially is on the snap of the ball, we tell our guys to take um, what is usually around a six inch first step. It's almost getting right back to square. We don't like that first step to be too big because then that foot is in the air too long. And then that offensive tackle can get their hands on us when we have only one foot in the ground. So we found that usually a six inch first step will get us back to our base 
at, at the same time our hands are on the tackle and we're nice and firm. Um, we like that outside hand, the hand that was down, to be in the V of the off offensive tackle's neck. And then that inside hand, which was down and relaxed, we want to shoot that to that near shoulder, that near shoulder tip, okay, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, for the keys, we tell our guys to key or put their eyes on the inside tip of the offensive tackle shoulder pad. Um, we do give them the ability to perif the ball. Sometimes the ball will move before the tackle does, but generally we tell our guys just to focus their eyes on the tip of the pad, the tip of that uh, tackle shoulder pad, that inside shoulder pad. Um, once the ball snapped and they have defeated the block, we tell them their eyes can then transition to the backfield. Okay, but generally we're gonna uh, really tell our guys their eyes gonna be on that, that tip of the pad. Um, another key for them is to know the alignment of the running back. Um, a lot of the time that's communicated from the linebackers, but then also within the D line, know if that running back is on their side or away from them. And then also knowing the depth of the running back. If he's in front of the quarterback or behind the quarterback, that'll give them a better indication of what direction the zone is going generally. And then what type of zone it is, whether it's inside zone or outside zone. Again, that uh, running backs alignment will tell them a lot. Also an important key is the depth of that offensive tackle. Um, based on what he's doing, the depth the depth that he has can give us an indicator on what's going on as well. So those are some, uh, you know, kind of opponent keys. But again, the main thing we tell our guys is to put their eyes on the tip of that near tackle shoulder pad. Um, responsibility of a four eye of a four eye. Um, generally, he is a B gap player. Um, so you're going to get only a handful of blocks at that point. Um, generally talk about zone going away from you. If the zone is going away from you, we tell them to defeat that cutoff block by the offensive tackle. And then we tell them to tempo the running back. Once they defeat the block, then their eyes can transition into the backfield to the running back. And we tell them to tempo the running back. They can't start crossover running in the direction of the zone because then that tackle will wash them. And then the running back will cut off his butt. So we really tell them to fight that cutoff block, get their eyes off it, their, their eyes and their hands in the right place, and then tempo the running back as the tackle's trying to cut them off. If they get zoned towards them, again, they're still attacking the inside tip of that tackle. Um, and at some point on that combo block, that tackle is going to have to leave for our outside linebacker or overhang player. And at that point, we tell our four eye to build a wall against that guard who essentially ha has to take him over. Um, if we get a down block from the offensive tackle lined up in that four eye, we tell them to, again, hold that B gap, get locked out against that tackle, and then they can transition their eyes into the backfield and once again, tempo the running back. If they get a black, uh, sorry, a back block from the guard, we tell them to fight pressure from that guard, condense that B gap, because most likely that tackle is pulling, they're adding the gap to the front side of the play, but our job is still to hold that gap outside the guard, lock him out, and once again, we can transition our eyes to the backfield, find the ball, and tempo the running back. So those are, again, uh, 100 and 200 level, talking about zone and a little bit of gap scheme working towards them or away from them as their four-eye alignment, essentially, for the most part, being a B-gap player, unless we're stunting them, okay? So uh, here's one of our drills. Let me pause it real quick. Here's one of our drills we work with zone going away. I just want to throw this one in here real quick. The zone is going away. So right now we're, we start fitted up and we are assuming that the zone is working this way and that this offensive tackle is working to cut us off. So we talk about prying and ripping through that tackle and then getting square. So I'm gonna slow play this real quick so you can see it. We're prying, we're ripping through, and then we're staying square. So this is one of our basic day one drills we talk about um, defeating that cutoff block. We start just fitted up and we already had a good first and second step. We got good, uh, better than good, great pad level. Our back is flat. Our eyes are up. Okay. We're going to power step. We're going to pry that tackle and we're going to rip through off onto the running back. So that's kind of a day one drill. I put that in there right here real quick so you can see it. We'll rep that all the time. Then the next progression is we will throw up a running back in there. Obviously, we got some D linemen. Again, um, let me slow play this real quick. So this is 
working zone. And this is probably a poor alignment. Our running back should be a little more to his right. Again, we're, we're, we're uh, stimulating zone work in this way. So this tackle is trying to take over or cut off our four eye. So we're going to tell him to keep fighting that pressure. Okay, we're going to tell him to power step and rip through, but then his eyes are going to transition to the running back and he has to tempo him. Just slow play this for you. So pry, rip, and now we're tempoing. And then once this running back cuts back off his butt, now we're going to work on ripping through and then working around. And that probably wasn't very good pacing. Obviously, this guy's not a very uh, good scout team running back, but just kind of an idea, again, how we talk to our guys about tempo and the running back with the zone scheme going away from us in a four eye. Okay, rip power step, rip through. Not a very good rip there. Could have been better. And then we want to keep prying that. We want to condense that block, and then we're going to work on ripping around and maybe try to get a heel slap or a roll tackle from the backside. Here's another example again. We are simulating a inside zone going this way. So this tackle is trying to take over or cut off this four eye. Again, we're going to power step, rip through, tempo that back. And then in this case, it stayed front side. So we're going to tag off on the near hip. Again, this probably would turn into a roll tackle. Um, I don't have any roll tackle drills on here, but we want to get our pad level down in that case. Um, the types of blocks we see, we talked about these already pretty much, but I'm going to throw this in here. Uh, we'll see, obviously, some zone scheme stuff, some, some gap scheme stuff. And I'll talk a little bit about pass protection and pass rush out of the four eye, but not going to spend too much time on that, just staying 100 to 200 level today. Uh, combo blocks. Okay. Um, talking about how we teach our four eyes taking on a combo block from the guard and the tackle. So essentially, again, our four eyes are, are instructed and taught to attack that inside tip of the tackle. So his first job is to get knockback on the tackle, which will put the tackle and the guard on separate levels. What he's really trying to do is create his own scene by putting that tackle on a different level than the guard. And then once a, one of the blockers leaves, once either the tackle leaves or once the guard leaves, we tell our guys to shed the block and basically throw myself in the gap. So once, if, if the tackle leaves, I want to shed that guard and throw myself in the B gap. If the guard leaves, I want to get off that tackle and throw myself still in the B gap, but now just away from the tackle. Okay, and we'll see some good clips here coming up um, where our guys, I mean, some of them do a great job and some do, some don't. So here's just one of the drills we do in, in individual within ourselves without the offensive line. And then I will show you some pod drills we did uh, with our offensive line, some good and some bad. Obviously, this is with us, so it's designed for the defense to win. This is our combo fit up. So we start fitted up. You can see 94 here is fitted up. Um, this essentially is the tackle. Oh, that's not going to work. Let me undo that. Here's our tackle. And then here's our guard. Okay. So what we're doing is we're getting, we're working this inside tip of this tackle right here, knocking him back, getting an extension. Once the guard leaves, I'm going to throw myself into the B gap. So you'll see it here slow extension. Once that guard leaves, I'm going to throw myself and we could have been in a little better control there. Let me run that back real quick. Just run it through slow. So we're going to run our feet, run our feet, get locked out on that tackle. Once the guard leaves, run it back again. Once that guard leaves, we want to throw ourselves into the B gap under control. You can see that, uh, his feet get a little tight and crossed over here, and then he loses some balance, all right? So here's another combo fit up. Again, here's the tackle on the uh, on our four eyes right. Here's the guard. So again, we got good pad level. We start fitted up. Okay, we're going to run our feet. We're going to get our arms locked out. We're going to get knocked back on the tackle. We're going to get separation, create some space. Again, once this guard leaves our hip, we want to throw ourselves back in that B gap. So this is our combo fit up drill we'll do. Um, again, just with each other, with ourselves. So again, here's the tackle. We're fitted up on his inside shoulder. Here's the guard coming to combo us. Again, we'll run our feet, get lock out, 
get knocked back on that tackle, put them on separate levels, create our own seam. And then once one of the blocker leaves, in this case, once the guard leaves, I want to throw myself into the B gap under control. That's a pretty good job there. Okay. Um, and then the other thing I want to talk about of our, out of our four eyes, uh, some of our defensive line stunts. So some of our uh, line stunts out of a four eye will be a gap stunt. So basically going from a four eye all the way to the A gap, we will use kind of what we call our long stick technique, which essentially we're going to tell them to almost be merging two gaps. It's one gap, but going from a four eye all the way to the A gap is almost like a long stick technique. So we'll use what we call double merge technique. Um, and then sometimes, obviously being in a four eye, we will stunt or slant outside the tackle so that's going from one edge of the tackle to the other so from the b to the c gap going from like a four i to a five so i'll show you our drill here in a minute and then we also have what we call what we call edge to edge so if i'm in a four i and i'm slanting towards the ball i'm going from a four i to a three technique so going from instead of attacking the inside tip of that tackle now i'm slanting and attacking the outside tip of the guard we call that edge to edge. And then based on the guards block, if he works towards us, so if I'm working from a four eye to a three and that guard is coming towards me, we tell that four eye to do what we call collision and climb, C and C. He's gonna collision that guard and then he wants to climb vertical. If I'm working from a four eye down to a three and that guard is working inside, we're gonna double merge. So work down to a three, the guard's not there, we want to merge again inside and close that gap down. So that's what we call double merge technique. So um, our basic slanting technique is this. We want to sometimes um, we, uh, based on our guys, we might shorten down their stagger a little bit and go from toe to heel to toe to instep. Um, but that first step is going to be at a 45 degree angle in the direction we're slanting. The hand that's down, we tell them to start the lawnmower with it. I'll show you that here in a minute on a drill. Our off hand, which again is loose and relaxed, we tell them to rip and grab grass with that hand. And then our eyes have to get to the new gap or the new edge. We don't want to look there before the snap and give it away. So our eyes are still on that inside tip of the pad. And then once we're going to merge, whether it's out or whether it's down to the guard for a three eye, our eyes go to that next edge or next gap. Yeah, so I'm going to show you um, kind of one of our edge to edge drills. So again, uh, this is kind of probably more of our two or 300 level merge drill. We've already practiced uh, over and over and over again, that first 45 degree angle step. We've already practiced starting lawnmower with our down hand. We've already practiced ripping and grabbing grass with our off hand. And so this is, again, more of a 200 or 300 level uh, slanting, what we call merging drill. So what's going to happen is these guys are going to be ripping and, sorry, not ripping, I should say, starting the lawnmower with their right hand and ripping and grabbing get grass with their left hand. Their eyes are now going to go to their new gap. So Coach Crutch here is going to be the new gap. So once they get their eyes on Coach Crutch, he's going to give them an indicator whether they're going to keep merging push to move, push to move in this direction. Or if the ball was going, hold the arrow up. If the ball was working this way, now they're gonna work their collision and climb. So essentially they would work here and then collision and climb, sorry. And then collision and climb and then push to move, push to move, push to move and work down the line this way. Or he could give them, the, give them a pass set and they're gonna work their merge technique and then they're going to work a pass, pass rush move on air. All right. So I'm a slow play through here. Again, you're going to see, I think it's a pretty good clip. If I remember correctly, a great lawnmower with their right hand. They should be ripping and grabbing grass and getting their shoulders turned with their left hand. This step should be at a 45 degree angle this way. So they should all be stepping 45 degrees angle, a 45 angle degree. I did teach math for a few years. I should be able to say that better in this direction. All right. So I'm a slow play, maybe a little bit of camera angle too. Boom. Oh, sorry. My connection is not great. It's a little jumpy. Let me go back for you. So again, we're going to get a 45 degree angle step right here. We're going to get a, a lawnmower rip with that right hand. 
we're going to grab grass and rip with our left hand. Our eyes go to our gap, and then Coach Crutch is going to point. looks like he's pointing to the right, so that means these guys should all be collision and climbing. So they're going to work to their gap and then collision the guard, essentially, and then push to move, push to move, and then rip and run down the line. Okay, 45-degree angle step. You can see the, uh, these two probably took a, a little bit too much of an exaggerated step. Their foot's in the air a little bit too long. Let's run it back. Show you all the lawnmower. You can watch their right hand that's down. Should be starting the lawnmower. Not bad. Collision and climb, push to move, push to move, rip and run. Okay, check the next rep for you. Again, this is like a 200 to 300 level. So here's the same, apologize, it's a little jumpy, same drill from the other angle. So they're all gonna, they're all shaded over here to the right side. They're gonna work out to the C gap and then get their indicator whether they're going to work down the line or collision and climb work back out. Again, 45 degree angle step this way. This left hand, you guys should all see a lawnmower action starting the lawnmower. They should be ripping and grabbing grass here. This arm might be a little too flexed right now. Number a flexed muscle is a slow muscle. I want it nice and loose. You can see them ripping and grabbing grass. They should be starting the lawnmower with their left hand and then taking a 45 degree angle step. Their eyes go to their gap. Pad level should still be down. They're collision and climbing. Right now, coach is giving them something go working this way. Oh, sorry about that. Try to make a little arrow. So again, they're collision and climbing. They merge to the left. The ball's going back out. Collision, climb, push, push to move, rip and run. Push to move, push to move, rip and run. This might have been still 100 to 200. We didn't even tell them to rip and run yet. Okay, this is early in fall camp, it looks like. Okay, same thing again. Apologize, my film's a little jumpy. 45 degree angle step here. Starting the lawnmower with their left hand and then ripping and grabbing grass with their right hand. Ripping and grabbing grass. Lawnmower started, 45 degree angle step. My eyes go to my new edge or new gap. Collision and climb, stay square, push to move, push to move, rip and run. So this is our merge drill. I'm gonna show you two one more time here from straight on. Pause it for you. Okay, again. Oh, let me run this back a little bit. Um, I think Miles here is in a four-point stance. I don't know why he's got both hands down. Sometimes he tends to do that. Again, 45-degree angle step working this way. I don't think Aiden's in. Someone's behind here. Um, starting the lawnmower with their right hand and then ripping grass. His hand's already down. It should be off and relaxed. But you can see the lawnmower action. It's pretty good shoulder. That lawnmower is gonna get that shoulder turn. Um, if you listen to some receiver coach, they talk about that being the blade, the blade drill. So a lot of these drills transition from receiver to D line. So this is the, you know, like a receiver doing the blade drill on a release and uh, um, uh, decreasing the surface that the offensive lineman has to hit. Start that lawnmower, rip and run, 45 degree angle step. Okay, we're a little high. We will do this, do this under the shoots as well. Once we get a little more progressed, advanced, I mean, we're still in helmets, and it looks like this is probably one of the first days of uh, fall camp. Okay, I get to my gap. We do put this little uh, mini step over pad here to work on them picking their feet up so they don't get tripped up with the offensive line. Oops, hit the wrong button. Let's go to the next one. Oh, okay, here's a good rep. So we're working to merge here, working a slant, and then we're going to get a pass rush cue. So I'm working 45. Start the lawnmower, rip and grab grass. You can see not a not a great rip here. Uh, can't tell who that is, but not a great rip and grab grass. His arm just kind of hangs there. We want to start the lawnmower, get our shoulders turned. And now once we get a pass set, now we're going to work a pass rush move on air. Okay, good little hip flip there by one of the twins. All right, so here's a combo drill. Uh, these first two is going to be, uh, this is Matt Gotell here. So they're working a combo block. This really wasn't, it wasn't really uh, a zone block or a gap block. It was just working a combo. So again, Matt's job is to work this tip of the pad right here on this tackle. So you're going to see this first step he takes right here is going to be real bad. He takes a, um, I don't even know how he turns his ankle and foot this way, but he's going to get a bad first step. 
and I'm going to slow play this. And, and a lot of the reason this is a bad rep for Matt is a lot of it's his feet. You'll see his pad level. His screws get above the screws of the offensive lineman. We tell our D lineman to get your helmet screws, these screws, underneath the screws of the offensive lineman's helmet. Okay, so I'm going to work with these uh, internet connection issues and try to slow play it for you. So, okay, not bad. Now his hand could be a little farther out where he's got to move his body weight backwards a little bit, but his hand does not look like it's out far enough in front of his face. Okay, he's a little slow off the ball. Okay, these guys are moving. He hasn't barely moved. And you'll see his first step. Let me slow play it for you. His first step, he opens his foot up and turns it almost 90 degrees. He turns his whole body, um, which gives this guard a really easy target on him. And then you'll see his second step puts him in a crossover base, which is not a very good strong base to be able to fight a combo block. He's in a bad situation. His screws are not under the screws of the offensive tackle. You can see his pad level is not great. And you can look at his feet right now. Here's his two feet. Here's one foot. And then here's another foot. Okay, so that's not a very good base. That's, uh, you know, we'll, we'll coach that up with his feet. But he lost his base. He lost his pad level. And it's going to be really hard to win a rep on a combo block when you lose your base and you lose your pad level. Okay, I'll play it a little uh, again. Now, luckily, Matt's just a, you know, a big, strong dude, and he decently recovers here. When the tackle comes off, he is able to rip off this guard. But this B gap is way too big, or this A gap now, sorry. Because this, this B gap, here's the B gap. I mean, this would be a big A gap for our linebacker to be able to fill. Um, so, again, just some four-eye play. Again, it all started with his first step, and then his helmet, his pad level was too high. Now, here's the same guy. Here's Matt Gotell again, um, going against – same quality offensive line. His first step isn't great, but it's still better. His foot does still turn a little bit. You'll see here in a second right here. It's still a little bit turned, but his base is a lot better than the last time. His pad level is a lot better than the last time, and he's a lot more square than last time. Okay? And you can see he's fighting that tackle. Again, he's getting a little high here. His hands, I can't really see where his hands are. It's a bad angle. But he is getting, he's working that tackle He's getting separation. You can see it that last second there. He created a seam for himself. And then he wants to hold and pry that B gap. Again, same guy, much better second rep than first rep. Let me let this one run out. All right. Yep. I remember this one. All right. So I wanted just to watch the first step. Watch this first step and then watch this second step. Okay. Look, look at this first step. This is one of our, uh, he was a new guy transferred in from Stetson. He takes this first foot. Well, watch this step. He takes this foot and steps with it way over here. Then he takes this foot and steps here and he puts both his feet on a tightrope. So completely loses his base. I mean, I, I don't care how big and how strong, how physical you are. You put both your feet in a straight line, you are not going to be able to support or fight a lot of weight. Let me undo those. All right. So take a look at this first step. He steps forward, much too big first step, and in. So you can see, I mean, both his feet got really turned, really tight. He doesn't have any power. His pad level's too high. He's just trying to shoot this gap. He's not fighting. He's not trying to get this tackle on a different level than the guard. I'm going to run it through again. Um, and then he just kind of ends up fighting, working out. So that's a bad rep. Again, it all started with his first step and his hand placement. All right. So I'm going to show two reps of uh, – this is Aiden Sweat right here. I'm going to show two reps of him. This first rep, okay, uh, Aiden's nickname is Crazy Legs. Pretty good. He's in a pretty good stance. Okay, good good first step. Not, not a bad second step. Again, his screws should be underneath the screws a little bit lower to get his pad level down. He's got this hand in, in a good spot, good location. Okay. But then he stops his feet, and then he turns his feet. 
And once you get turned like this and you lose that base, you're in trouble. Okay. Pad level's bad. His feet are bad. He's got one hand in a good spot. I can't see where his left hand is. I apologize. But, and then he gets drove out of there. Okay. Now here's the same guy. Here's a rep a little bit later. Okay. Again, going against, uh, these are actually, I mean, these are starters he's going against. Aiden's about a 245, 250 pound defensive lineman, probably our smallest one um, that that was in the, the rotation. Um, so you'll see here, better first step. He's attacking the tackle with much better pad level. Um, now his, his hand is not, you can see he misses the left hand right here. Can't see where his right hand is, but his pad level is a lot better. He's got his screws underneath the tackle and he's still getting turned a little bit but he doesn't stop his feet. He keeps moving them, keeps fighting. And it's a little bit of a better rep than the first one. And it all started with his first step and his pad level. Pretty simple. Okay, this is a pretty good rep right here by Brandon. Okay, you're gonna see him attack this inside tip of the tackle. Okay, a little bit too big of a first step. That foot was in the air a little too long, but he's got a nice square base. He's staying low, he's driving, he's driving, he's driving, the tackle comes off and falls, and then he beats and rips and finishes on that guard in the B-gap, so that's a good rep. Let me uh, jump, let's see where I'm at real quick. Uh, let's go to a couple back blocks. Um, so, let me pause this, apologize. So basically, um, now this tackle and this guard are on the same level. Generally, we're probably not expecting a pull when they're on the same level. Um, but here's our four eye, here's our tackle, here's our guard. We're going to get a back block. So that means the tackle is going to pull and the guard's going to block back on us. So again, we want to fight this pressure of the guard. Once that tackle leaves, my eyes should be here. Once I see him pull, that's going to take my eyes to this outside tip of the guard. So my eyes transition to the guard. I want to hold that B gap. Okay, my job is still the outside of this part. This is still my gap. Okay, we're going to let someone else take care of this added gap that they put on the front side by pulling the tackle. My job is still to hold that B gap. So in this, in this case right now, Chris is wrong trying to get into that A gap right now too soon. He should be holding that B gap, get an extension, and then he can transition his eyes. Once he defeats the block, he can transition his eyes from the offensive lineman to the backfield and then tempo the running back. Okay, again, we're going to get a back block from the guard. The tackle pulls. That's going to take my eyes from the tackle to the guard. My job is to hold this B gap. Jump back a little bit. I now want to get my inside hand on the V of this guard and my outside hand. Sorry, yeah, on the V of the neck of the guard. And this outside hand on this outside shoulder tip of the uh, guard as well. Okay, we're a little too high. We're going in with our shoulder, not using our hands. Now we want to get locked out, get extension work and we don't get any extension there until the very very end oh all right so these last couple uh we're talking about now this is the center and the guard so this is actually maybe like a three technique not quite a four eye but this is zone going away from us so they're running the zone they're running the zone in this direction now we're not quite in a four eye. We're now more in a little bit where we'd be a three if this was a this was the tackle and this was the guard. But you're gonna get an idea. We're gonna attack attack this tip of the pad. Basically, you want to think of this as um, yeah, they're running zone away from us. Okay. So again, I want to get these guys on separate levels. Okay, not a bad first step. Again, Matt likes to turn that foot a little bit. Something that we worked on over the course of the season. He wants to attack that inside tip. Hands looks like it's in a good spot. He's just pad level. He needs to stay low and then fight. Keep running his feet. Okay, here's a good one right here. Okay, zone going to this direction, really kind of a way. Again, think of this as like uh, him being in a four eye right here and this being the guard and the zone going that direction. So I'm attacking this tip of this pad right here. I do want my eyes to be up. My head shouldn't be down right now. Okay, we're not using our hands very well. We get our shoulder in there, but we do get some good knockback. And now we need to keep working and ripping and run to get inside of what would be the tackle. 
and we get sealed off. So that's a bad rip. Okay, we need to keep working inside and then work a rip and run and get inside. Okay, last one right here. So uh, two reps ago, same person, didn't do too well. Again, we're attacking that inside tip of that pad. Not bad, except for we kind of miss with that hand on the shoulder. Okay, this hand should get to this shoulder. This inside hand should get to the V of the neck. Pad level's good. My screws are under his screws. I need to get that first step in the ground. And then I went backwards with my second step. Okay, I need to go forward, not backwards. And then I want to get those guys on separate levels, create a seam for myself, and then get inside of there. But that wasn't horrible. All right. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna roll through a couple. Uh, um, let's see what time. All right, we got about 10, 15 minutes. We're gonna roll through a couple uh, team. So this is good on good. This was from spring of 2019. We got two four eyes to look at here. All right. So they're gonna run zone to the boundary. So we're gonna get zone to the boundary. So again, this four eye is working this inside tip of the pad. Eventually, this tackle is gonna have to leave for our outside linebacker. So then we tell our four eye, he's got to build a wall on this guard trying to take him over. Our field four eye, which is on the same side of the running back, he needs to defeat this cutoff block, and then he wants to tempo this back in the B gap. All right, let me let this go for a sec. I put a couple notes on here. If it stops, yep. Um, so our, our boundary four eye, which is zone is going towards, he needs to do a better job of attacking the offensive tackle, and he needs to work on getting away from this guard scoop block. Uh, we're not worried about the nose guard right now. He is shaded away from it. And then our field four eye, uh, apologize, but he gets cut off by this uh, field tackle uh, because of his first step, I believe. He steps out with that first step instead of stepping forward, takes too big of a first step. By then, this tackle has got him cut off at this point. He's got to really work hard, rip and run to get inside this tackle because this is his, this is his uh, gap, this this backside B gap out of that four eye. You can watch the front side guard here, or front side four eye does a pretty good job on this guard. Yeah, that tackle leaves right away, which means now he just needs to get knocked back and build a wall against this guard. And he's doing a pretty good job in knockback. You can see that guard is almost three yards in the backfield. This, this running play is going sideways, which is what we want. At this point right here, okay, we got a note on here. At this point, his eyes can transition to the back. And now we need to violently, like it says here, violently rip and run flat down the line. And then we just tell him to tag off, you know, in this team period. But he needs to rip off of this guard violently and then go flat and tag off on him. And you'll see he doesn't rip off and... I mean, that may or may not be a tackle. If he would have violently ripped off that guard, he did a great job right here getting knocked back and building a wall. Now, at this point, he can violently rip and run, and this would probably be a roll tackle, um, which we work a lot in practice. We're not talking about tackling today, but um, this would be probably a roll tackle from the backside and probably a TFL. All right, we're going to shift. All right, uh, so they're going to run zone uh, to the boundary again. This is not a bad job by our boundary four eye fighting the uh, fighting the wash. Um, this force uh, field side guy is gathering too much and just not being uh, he's not attacking enough, not being aggressive enough. Let me slow play it. So you can see we're attacking this inside tip. This tackle is leaving right away. So now I'm going to work and building a wall, get vertical, get knocked back, and build the wall against this guard. And then our field four eye needs to work inside this tackle for that backside B gap. You can see he's working just too much head up on him. He needs to work back inside. His feet are a little wide. He needs to now rip and run and get in this B gap. And then now our, you know, our outside linebacker would have this in a second here. You'll see the cutback. Our outside linebacker should have this cutback in the C gap. But not a bad job here by our front side four eye. Let me run it back again so you can see from the snap. He's going to work to attack the inside tip of this tackle. Once he leaves, he knows this, he's just gonna work to build a wall and get knocked back on this guard. Okay, he's working to attack it. That tackle leaves right away. The guard's coming to him. His eyes now go to the outside tip of the uh, guard coming at him. 
Okay, he's just working to get knocked back, get knocked back, get knocked back, and build a wall. It's pretty good right there. Okay, here's our nose guard, did, did a good job doing the same thing against that backside guard. And now our backside four eyes should be more inside here. And then here's our, uh, here's our C gap player, our outside linebacker. All right. Jump ahead a little bit. All right, uh, good firmness here. You'll see decent firmness. Um, on the backside, we need to get locked out, but it was good contact. So you're gonna run in, again, inside zone to the boundary. And you can see essentially this play, we eat up, for the most part, all five linemen with three defensive linemen. So we, 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 we take up five with three. And we know when we take up our three defensive linemen, take up their five offensive linemen, we got three hitters coming in our three, four defense. So combo block here, which is the drill we worked that I showed a minute ago, combo block here from the center and the guard. And then we want to beat this backside tackle with that pry rip tempo drill that we showed earlier. He wants to pry and rip and get in this D gap and then tempo the back. He doesn't want to cross over run and leave a big cutback for this backside linebacker to have to fill. Um, this is good firmness on the front side four eye. You can see he's attacking and really neither of these guys can come off yet. And you'll see that that creates free hitters out here for us with our linebackers. But essentially, they never come off both double teams. Our nose guard does a great job with the center and the backside guard. Um, and then on the front side, our four eye does a great job with the tackle and the guard. Just hold them, being firm. They never can come off. And then we got free hitters. Let me see what we got here. I'm going to work. Uh, go to some outside zone here in a minute. Okay, inside zone again to the boundary. Uh, we got a four eye here, and it looks like probably missed the line, but the five right there, or someone's missed the line. Um, but again, tackle leaves right now. I want to build a wall on that guard and knock him back. Yeah, so that boundary four eye needs to build a wall and knock him, knock that guard back. There's a great job right there, knocking him back, building a wall forcing this ball to cut back up inside where we run that back real quick for you. Okay. We didn't execute the defense well, but um, we didn't get a great merge here. I don't think he was really supposed to, but he ended up getting into that B gap. And then there you go. Okay. So we're going to get uh, outside zone to the bound or to the field here. Sorry. Uh, we're just in two, four eyes and a, and a, and a, and a zero head up. Um, so again, same thing here. I want to, once this tackle just turns and runs, I want to get knocked back on this guard and build a wall. And then again, on the backside end to get inside of that tackle in the B gap. Okay. So you can see on the front side, let me run it back for you. Okay. Working to the tackle, my eyes, you can see, all right, I point my finger. You can see his eyes are on this tip of the pad. This tip is leaving. It's going. So he knows this guard is going to try to take him over. His eyes transition here, get knocked back, and build a wall. Okay? Our nose guard, once that center leaves, we're not talking nose guards, but, I mean, he wants to do the same thing with that backside guard, and then we need to work, in, we need to work more inside of this backside tackle. And now he should be – his eyes can transition. He should be ripping and running down and cutting this B-gap down, condensing the B-gap. Yeah, great job out here by our play side for our field side play side for I building a wall. Here's our nose guard. He also needs to work ripping and running right here as well. Rip and run, rip and run. He needs to violently rip and get flat and get away from that uh, backside guard and then have better pad level and tag off. I want to get some of our merge plays in here. So some of our slanting just so you could see a little bit. So um, all, all three defensive linemen are going to be working to their right, uh, left from our vantage point. Now, now, this was kind of a counter T play. So they all should be collisioning and climbing. So as he works, kind of a long one, but as he merges in and the guards coming towards him, he wants to collision that guard and climb as our nose guard works back. Um, and he gets a back block, he wants to collision and climb, and then they just back block on this four eye. So he wants to hold and then transition his eyes to the backfield and tempo the back. I'm a bit of a tight. Sorry about that. Okay, same thing here. Like I just talked about, he needs to pry this and stay lower. 
So our field side was in a five. I know we're talking four eye stuff, but same thing. He's merging, he's slanting. He needs to pry this and then get vertical and knock this puller off. And we give him what we call destruction play, knock that puller off and we take, take two with one. Okay, he needs to pry and get vertical there, try to knock a puller off. So a little bit of gap scheme with some uh, slanting up front. Okay, we're all going to be working towards the field here. So our D-line is going to be slanted. You should see our 45-degree angle step. We start the lawnmower with our right arm, and then we should be ripping and grabbing grass with our left hand, and then getting our eyes to the guard, eyes to the guard. Our eyes actually should go out to this inside tip of the tight end. Um, this was just kind of a passive. Uh, we didn't do a great job collision and climbing here with our defensive end. Let's watch the four eye. We're talking four eyes. Our four eyes are going to work out to this tight end. Okay, he needs to stay more inside and again collision and climb. Now this was an RPO and they ended up throwing it, but you can still see that same concept we're talking about. About once I merge and the guard's coming towards me, I want to collision and I want to climb him. Same thing here. This nose guard should be working to this A-gap, collision and climb. We'll let it roll. Boom, collision and climb. They threw the boundary hitch. We'll give the boundary hitch up. If you want to throw boundary hitches down the field, we'll see how good that is, how that goes. Um, decent rep here. Um, the more ground that this guy gave up on our edge to edge, the quicker he can react and pop vertical and then spill it. Okay, so four eye, we're working towards the field. So he's working edge to edge. He's working to this guard. He's working to this guard. He's working out here to this outside tip of the um, tackle. Slow play it for you. Boom. Now he wants to pry this and get vertical. He's As he was merging, the guard left, and he's getting a down block from the tackle. So we need to keep a better, bit, better base. Let's run that back and watch his feet a little bit. Good first step. And then he crossed over. You see how he crossed his feet over here? Let me pause it right here. We're crossed over. That's not good. We want to keep a nice, uh, a nice square base with our feet. So too big of a second step. It's really hard to fight a down block when you're crossed over and even one foot's in the air. So again, we talk about just our fundamentals and our technique. So you can see it gets knocked down. Now we should tell them to, to take out this puller. Okay, take the puller out. It did kind of spill the second puller, but. Um, there's a four eye play. Let me get, all right, we're all working towards the field here. Let me go to the tight. Sorry about that. Okay. So again, here's an example of collision and climb. So these guys are all working in. You can see he's probably giving it away a little bit with his eyes. He's looking to the side. He should be looking at this. And then once he merges, his eyes should go to this pad. Once he slants or merges this way, his eyes go here and he's going to work outside to the C gap. Again, 45 degree angle step to the left, start the lawnmower, rip and grab grass. You can see all three D linemen, not bad. Now we should work collision and climb, collision and climb, and then hold this C gap if the quarterback were to keep it. And now this linebacker knows he was gonna trigger and uh, fit that C gap. Okay. So we got a, I mean, I know we're talking four eye play. You can tell our nose guard here, he ends up working outside of this guard instead of working to the inside of him. He should be collisioning. I mean, this is, goes for all these guys, collisioning and then climbing and stay in this A gap. His eyes go to this tip of the pad. It's coming at me. I want to collision and I want to climb and get vertical off that guard. That yeah, we kind of just give up our, give ourselves up. And then we end up on this combo block and now we want to work that guard on a separate level and then once this tackle, if he were to come off, we should really be throwing ourselves into this B gap here on that uh, boundary five, which slanted to a four eye. So that's kind of our 100 and 200 level uh, four eye technique again. I'll go back to the top and just kind of, um, again, it was, you know, somewhat of our basics out of our, uh, you know, our three, four defense playing the four eye. Uh, here's my information. If you want to see any more drills, you want to see any more cut ups, please do not hesitate to reach out. Again, I can get into more depth also on some of the other things that uh, that we do with our four eyes and it gets different other uh, schemes, obviously besides basic inside zone and a little bit of gap stuff. Please feel free to reach out.
appreciate you guys taking the time. Um, if you tuned in for a full hour, I mean, that's tough. I appreciate it. Um, but again, if you want to reach out, I'm always available. Um, hope everyone's having a great day, morning, evening, whatever it is. And uh, God bless you guys and have a great day.